Rev up your engines. Today I'm gonna to talk about what you should know if you're going to buy a hybrid car. Now anyone who's watched me in the past realizes I'm not a big fan of hybrid cars. They're an extremely high level of technology and as they age, they can cost a small fortune to repair correctly. But that said, a lot of people are interested in them. So I'm gonna tell you the truth about hybrid cars, what you should know before you either decide to buy one or not buy one. Now the first thing of course is reliability. You want a reliable one, okay? This is a seven year old Camry hybrid. It's got 112,000 miles on it, pretty much trouble free. Takes a four cylinder gasoline engine, combines it with an electric motor and a huge battery so that it has more horsepower and can regenerate electricity when you slow down. So you don't waste all that energy. In town, you regenerate. And on a highway, the electric motor gives a boost for more horsepower. For example, in this hybrid Camry, the combination between the engine and the electric motor gives 200 horsepower. Where a stock Camry, the same size and everything, with the four cylinder engine, puts out 178 horsepower. So you got 22 more horsepower to mess around with. Now, this isn't a Prius. The Prius used Atkinson cycle engines, which are small four cylinder gas engines that don't have cams in them. It's an old design that kind of failed because they work fine, but they don't put out enough horsepower. But since they want the biggest gas mileage they can in a Prius, they use an Atkinson motor. But this engine, it's just a conventional Toyota four cylinder engine. It's not an Atkinson cycle, it's a normal engine. So this Camry can get 43 miles a gallon in the city and 39 miles on the highway. The highway is always lower because you're not regenerating on the highway. Where the conventional Toyota Camry with just a four cylinder gas engine gets 25 in the city and 35 on the highway. The 2013 Prius hybrid, it can get 49 miles a gallon on the highway. And some of these people that own Priuses, man, they drive conservatively. I had a customer that actually got over 50 miles a gallon on the highway, but he drove like a snail too. You gotta take that into consideration. Half the time he wouldn't even go on the speed limit. So in the case of this Camry hybrid, it's in between a regular Camry and a Prius. It gets good gas mileage, better than the regular Camry, but not as good as the Prius. Then you gotta decide, what do you want, a full-size car that's really nice, or a little bitty Prius that isn't quite as nice? Now realize, of course, that all hybrid cars are insanely complex. This Camry air conditioning system, it's not a normal one. It doesn't run off a fan belt off the engine. It's totally electronic. We look down here, there it is. You can see that's the backside. <laughs> There's no uh, belt running it. It's electronically run. Only a pro should work on them. It's not something that you should even think about messing with. Besides the high amount of electricity that can electrocute you, they have to use a special type of refrigerant oil, one that doesn't conduct electricity. If you put regular peg oil in these things, you can end up shorting the compressor out. So you need a dedicated set of air conditioning equipment gauges just to work on these things. You can't use one you use for everything else because if that gets contaminated by the wrong oil, can short up. So needless to say, these are not DIY repair cars by any stretch of the imagination. Working on these things, you need safety gloves that are rated up to a thousand volts, then leather gloves on top of that. You gotta test them every time before you work on the car. You gotta disconnect the power pick and wait for it to power down. This is stuff that you don't want to mess around with yourself. But as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is a Toyota hybrid. They don't really have that many problems breaking down. You don't break down, you don't care how complicated it is. I advise people, if you're gonna buy a hybrid, buy a brand new one. Don't buy an old one with a lot of mileage. Let's say the battery decides to go out. These batteries cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Only a pro can replace them. And I've noticed recently a lot of guys are offering these rebuilt or remanufactured battery packs. My advice is stay away from that stuff. You'll get some kind of a guarantee, but the ones that I've seen, they never lasted all that long. This one's still got the original one, seven years old. I've seen them 15, they're still working on the original ones. But since the battery packs are just that, they're a bunch of smaller batteries connected together, they start to go bad. They have machines to test them and they'll say, oh, so many of these are bad, we'll replace those, solder new ones in. But still, you got a whole bunch of old ones left. They're not gonna last 10, 15 years, these remanufactured, rebuilt ones. It's just a fact. So if you decide you wanna buy a hybrid, one, I'd say, buy yourself a new one. And two, decide what kind of drive am I gonna do? I met Uber drivers in Seattle. They were all driving Toyota 
hybrid vehicles. They love them because they do all kinds of stop and go driving and they got great gas mileage in town. Sometimes two to three times of the vehicles that they said they had previously driven. So they were sold on them. But that's a business decision. They know how much they pay for fuel, how many miles they drive. But if you're just a normal person driving around, and especially if you do a lot of highway driving, hybrid Camry, it only gets three miles a gallon better gas mileage on a highway than the non-hybrid one. If you're driving on a highway all the time, all that extra money you're paying for the hybrid, eh, you'll probably never recoup your investment. And yeah, in this case, 23 more horsepower. But truthfully, when I drive them around, I really can't tell the difference between this and a regular Camry when I'm driving on a highway. It really doesn't make all that much difference acceleration wise. But that said, I've got lots of customers are driving Toyota hybrids and they're perfectly happy with them. They got well over 100,000 trouble free miles on them. Just really stay away from buying a low priced high mileage old one because I had a customer buy one that was like 11 years old and had 150,000 miles on it. Generator went out and it was going to cost about $5,000 to repair it because the design, the engine, the transmission had to be taken out it was a very expensive thing to do. And hey, who's gonna spend that on a car that they only paid $1,500 for? Now I do have to say they're better designed than they used to be. Even in this 2013, hey, there's a lot of room in the trunk. The battery doesn't take up all that much space. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller than the regular Camry that goes a little deeper and down a little bit further, but it's still, Holds a lot of junk. Look at all the stuff my customers got in the trunk. And now, of course, comes the price. This hybrid Camry is $6,000 more than the non-hybrid Camry. Now, if you don't mind that price differential and the realization that repairs, when they finally do break down, if you keep them long enough, are going to be a lot more than the non-hybrid Camry, you might think, hey, I don't drive, stop, and go all the time in a business that I'll ever recoup $6,000 in cost, so you might just go for the regular Camry. That cost really depends on a lot of things even the world economic status gasoline is presently relatively cheap if gas gets to be super expensive having a car that gets that much better gas mileage in town is going to be an even bigger reason to buy the vehicle just realize that you're going to have to find a mechanic who's got some great scan tools and who really understands hybrid cars and high voltage electricity all these orange wiring over here down here 200 volts up and kill people. 12 volts, you can stick your tongue on the battery and your hand on the other table and battery, and it won't hurt you at all. But you don't want to be messing around with 200 volts. So now you know what to look for if you're thinking about buying a hybrid car. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.